Welcome back to Learning Docker. Now in today's tutorial, I'm gonna be basing it off a little bit of community feedback, and that's gonna be looking at customizing Docker images with Builder. So what I mean by this is we're gonna look at a way of customizing a Docker image with predefined uh, software, and in this case, just some environment variables. Um, there's other sort of more depthy ways to do pre-install or predefined Docker images, but I'm just gonna cover the bare basics for now so I don't go too deep. So let's just jump into it, shall we? So we're gonna take our structure from our previous tutorial, tutorial four, where we simply had a doc file using PHP 7.2 Apache. We had a doc compose file, which is gonna expose port uh, 80 on our local 8040. We're gonna use, we're gonna mount the volume source to our var www.html directory and use the default network. So quite a simple, straightforward thing. Um, and in our index.php, we're simply just going to have a check to see if the xdebug is enabled or is it not. So first things first, let's just kick up the Docker container using Docker Compose up and see what we get. So uh, duh, 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 we've been removed. Yes, I know because I've been testing it. So hopefully that should spin up our Docker container and not break anything. So the first thing that we're gonna get is xdebug is not enabled because by default on the PHP 7.2 Apache, it's not installed. So let's pre-configure the image that it will use it. So let's jump back over to our doc file and let's also kill off our Docker image, uh, our Docker container and kill off the image as well. So let's go Docker images, Docker RMI tutorial five. Okay. So we've got rid of our image, which is very important. So every time you run Docker Compose, it doesn't delete the image. So you need to destroy it if you want to have a fresh image or want to alter your image. So let's have a look. So all we're stating here is step one is pretty much from Apache 7.2, uh, from PHP 7.2 Apache will build our image. It's not really doing much, is it? So let's start by um, pre-installing some software. Now you pre-install software by using, or you can pre-install software by using the simple command run, which is gonna execute any bash command that you want. You could do things such as apt get update dash y, which will just basically go and get all the updates for aptitude and then confirm any of the prompts with the yes flag. But I'm not really too bothered about aptitude. We're mostly installed about xdebug. So the first thing that we need to do is install xdebug. Now I'm going to use this, um, do it using peckle. So I'm just going to copy and paste the command. Um, and when we build our container, if I just show you now, we should essentially have two steps. So docker compose up. See, we have essentially step one which is build the image from PHP 7.2 Apache, and step two, run peckle install xdebug. So, will that work? In theory, no. It won't work because it's installed xdebug, but xdebug still isn't available to us. Okay, so how do we avail make it available to us? Now, this is a very specific installation process for PHP, and we can do it using the docker php extension enabled command. So, I can drop that in there. And then all I want to do is make sure that my image gets rebuilt. So Docker images, Docker RMI, tutorial, uh, let's force it because I think something else is still trying to use it. Have I got multiple shells open here? If I do, let's kill off that shell. Docker images. Okay, we should be all right to spin up a new one. So if I do docker-compose, up, this should now execute three command or three steps, whereas the previous build did two steps. So, first things first, let's build from Apache PHP 7.2 Apache. Then let's um, run peckle install xdebugs 2.6.0. This is obviously running through the whole process of uh, building xdebug. It might take a moment or so to finish executing. And then once it's finished executing, we can see that um, it is now trying to, uh, where was the step? It was then running the Docker PHP extension enabled xdebug. We have a warning here or an error. 
Which is trying to recreate has been removed. If you continue volume data could be lost. Consider backing up your data before continuing. Yes, I've been playing around with the volumes and the networks. So you probably won't get this when you do it. But for any case, I'm just going to press yes. So hopefully now Xdebug should be available to us. And it is. And all I'm doing to check that is basically in our PHP file extension is I'm just doing a, a loaded check on an extension. It's there and therefore Xdebug is available to us and we can use it. Great. So we've now created a Docker image that has um, some predefined software. So we've created a PHP 7.2 um, Docker image with uh, Apache already installed, Xdebug already installed. We can also take it a step further and also run uh, Peckle install Redis as well. I can't remember the version of Redis I was using for this, so it's 4.0.1. So let's just assume that we're using a Redis server. And then finally run the Docker uh, PHP extension enabled or enable Redis. Okay, so that's also going to install Redis for us as well. But what happens if we want to predefine an environment variable for Redis as well? We can simply do this by stating env, which um, creates an environment variable for our system as well. So we can use env and then just say Redis host and then just call it Redis. So what should be available to us is also the host um, the Redis host global variable. So if I'm correct, let me just get my little script up here. Da, 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 da. Now, if I do, sorry, let me just check. If I do a var dump here at the end of this and do get environment variable Redis host which we should be able to use in our code if we want to. It prevents um, us having to define Redis host and so forth within the actual code. We can simply do it as part of the uh, Docker config file, which is great if you do in a continuous integration deployment. So let's kill this off. Let's do a Docker down. Uh, sorry, Docker compose down, make sure nothing's running. Hopefully it shouldn't be. Removing all the links there and we do docker images docker images if we can get it right docker remove image that image and let's just do a docker compose and up so we actually now have six steps so first step build from php 7.2 apache second step run peckle install xdebug third step enable xdebug Fourth step, install Peckle, install Redis 4.0.1. Fifth step, enable Redis. And sixth step and final sixth and final step, let's define a variable or environment variable, Redis host as Redis. So I'm not sure where we're up to at the moment. I think it's just installing Redis. Shouldn't take a moment. Now this probably, uh, now we don't actually have a Redis uh, environment that we can connect to. Um, I'm going to cover things such as um, connectivity between containers when I cover networking or maybe a little step on that. But either way, I just wanted to just show you what it's like to get some pre-installed software on a Docker container. So hopefully we should see, as we do here, our environment variable being thrown out as Redis. So that actually works really well. So we've defined a, the Redis host here and the value Redis. We just simply call the Redis host, and as you can see here, it's dumping out Redis. So if you wanted to predefine a bash command or you wanted something um, specified within the environment, you can do so with environment. You could also go to the extent of doing things such as copying the configs from your local um, your local Docker config to your container or your image, shall I say, and then we'll get built into container. Um, there's a lot you can do with with this. Um, you can predefine your workspace, you can predefine uh, other bits and pieces, but this is essentially the basic and fundamental things that you will, you will most commonly do with um, a Docker file. Um, primarily your run commands to predefine your software and your environment variables. You obviously might do other bits and pieces, but I, I don't want to delve too much into the this tutorial in, in this tutorial anyway. 
and I want to keep things nice and simple. So I hope this has answered a lot of people's questions on how do I um, pre-install some software on my image and on my container. And I hope you found this tutorial useful. And if you did, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, leave it in the comments box down below. But until next time, I will see you around.